We're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Father in heaven, grateful for the day that you have given uh, to us. Uh, grateful for the love and the grace that you have shown us this day. And Lord, we pray for uh, our folks who are out restoring power. Uh, working, pray Lord for their protection. I pray Lord that uh, soon uh, our citizens will be uh, back restored power. But Lord, we pray that you'd watch over and uh, care for our workers. Well, Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. Uh, thank you for giving us a good place to to live and to work and to raise our families. Thank you, Lord, for our city. And Lord, as we take care of the business of the city. Help us to do it according to your will, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. I'd like to welcome everybody to the meeting. Uh, we're going to start with uh, our clerk, uh, Ms. Pyra Wilson, is going to do right roll call for us. Town of Vidalia Board of Aldermen Roll Call for the regular meeting of the Mayor <coughs> Board of Aldermen dated May 9th, 2023. Alderman Betts. Present. Alderwoman Denby. Present. Alderman Gardner. Here. Alderman Probst. Present. Alderman Smith. Here. Mayor, let the record show that a quorum is present and accounted for. Okay. First thing on our agenda is we've got to approve our minutes from our previous meeting. And is uh, there any questions, any additions or deletions? If not, I hear entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Make that motion. Motion made by Alderman Gardner. There is a second. Second. Second by Alderman Probst. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. This part of our meeting, we usually ask for public comment. If there's anything on an agenda item that you want to talk about or mention, this would be a time to do it. I'm not saying that we wouldn't entertain more conversation as we got down into the agenda, but this is the time if you really wanted to discuss and give an opinion on something on the agenda when we do that. Is there anybody that wants to make any comment on any agenda items at this point? Okay, well, we're gonna move on. But before we get started, with those on Facebook Live and for other things, we had a, this afternoon, we've had a tree go down on Concordia Avenue by the Upper Elementary. It took down a three-phase uh, power line and it took three poles It broke them in half. So it's gonna be a pretty extensive repair. It's gonna be several hours. Uh, Citizens all the way from the levee on the north side of Carter Street will be out of power all the way up to behind the Sonic back in those neighborhoods there will be out of power for several hours. I will, after this meeting, if you want to stay on Facebook, I'll update you as the power crews update us. We have all hands on deck. All of our utility crews are out there, and I promise you there's not a better crew of men working out there than those guys. They're out there getting after it right now. Uh, I got a call from a lady that lived right across it, and before I could even call the department head to get started, they were en route. So that shows you how quick and efficient they are. I want to thank them, pray for their safety, and because until you don't have power, you just don't know what you don't appreciate. Our water, gas, we really appreciate the work that those guys do, and really and do it every day. So, and thank you, Lee. Lee, uh, he showed up and cleared the tree out of the out of the road and got it all ready for the so traffic, and they could get. Uh, workers up and down the highway, up and down the road to get things fixed. Thank you, Lee, for doing that. All right, we're going to start with our first thing on the agenda is Ms. Deborah Moe, is our CPA and the municipal accountant. She's going to do our financial statement for March. Tonight's financial statements include the balance sheet as of March the 31st, 2023, the statement of <coughs> revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balances for the nine months ending March the 31st, 2023. A summary budget to actual comparison by fund and a detailed budget to actual comparison by department. These financial statements have been distributed to all departments and aldermen for their review. In summary, the town has combined cash in the bank of 6.9 million, included restricted funds of 3.8 million in the hydro fund and 1.4 million in the sales tax fund. Investments include 9.7 million. Uh, the Hydro Reserve Fund has $2.3 million. There's $1.5 million in the general fund. There's $705,000 of ARPA funds and $5 million of hydro funds invested in LAMP. Total assets are $51.8 million. Total liabilities are $7.3 million. Fund balance is $44.6 million. The statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in fund balance for the nine months ending through March 31, 2023 indicates combined revenues of 34.2 million total expenditures of 37.4 million 
for a change in net position of a negative 3.2 million. At the end of March, revenue, revenues and expenses should be at or around 75% of budget. Overall, total revenues were at 67% of budget. Expenses were at 76% of budget. Transfers in and out were 138% of budget, and the change in net position was a negative 196% of budget. As approved by the board, debts of the town were paid off in January, including $4.5 million on the transmission line, $5.7 million on the municipal debt complex, complex debt, and $561,000 on the fire truck. These debt payoffs are the reasons for the lower than expected net change in position. The budget has not been revised to reflect these board approved changes. Revenues are lower than expected due to the lower hydro royalties caused by low levels in the Mississippi River and timing of the intergovernmental revenue income, but are offset by the increase in sales tax revenue. Expenses are higher due somewhat by the cost of repairs to the conveyor belt at the port and cost of natural gas purchases have exceeded the budget by 553000 in nine months. Capital outlay is at 59% of budget. Payoff of the fire truck has also increased expenses. We have received 408,000 insurance proceeds for the 411,000 total cost of damages to the port. Vehicle lease payments are beginning to show up in these financials. Overall, all we have leased 45 vehicles through March. We do anticipate the lease payments for all the town vehicles to be around 35,000 to 40,000 per month. The town has received the 1.4 million ARPA funds. From this amount, we have used 165,000 to help offset the citizens' electric costs for three months and 63.9 thousand to help supplement the employee retention payments in 2022. The remaining amount has not been approved, appropriated. Budget revisions will be necessary for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2023. The 2023-24 annual budget is being presented tonight to the Alderman and will be available for public inspection tomorrow. A vote will be taken at the next regularly scheduled meeting in June. Okay. Any the Alderman got a question of, uh, of Ms. Moak? I do. I have a question. <clears throat> So um, I've kind of wrote some and jotted some notes down that I have pertaining to the budget. Um, if you would let me um, say what I have to say and then anybody that has anything pertaining to what I have, my matters, they can come behind me. So it's question pertaining to the budget. Do we not have funds set aside for travel registration hotel for the mayor and the board of Alton? Do we not have something new or do we have something new in place that was not approved by the board? I have been a member of the LMA for seven years since I've been elected, and I have never been told that I could not attend a meeting. Why now? What has brought this change on? I feel this is unjust and the mayor's being prejudiced towards me. I have never had to call the mayor to say, Alderman Gardner, can you drive back, forth, or, or anything like that? I think this is just a slap in my face. Um, the city owes me $352 for my last normal meeting for the LMA that was in Baton Rouge. If we are creating a new check and balance system for, the, for this alderman, I think we need to create a new check and balance system for all elected officials. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Okay. Well, number one, the alderman cannot call and request funds from employees and workers. He has to get permission. Alderman Gardner will not get permission and ask for permission before he goes these things. All the other aldermen do what is necessary to dis disperse these funds. And Alderman Gardner goes and travels and, and, and emails employees saying, sign me up for this, sign me up for that, without any approval from me. Now, the other aldermen have the decency to do and follow protocol. And until he does that or asks the way he's supposed to, I'm the one that approves these things. You can't go and travel all over the place and then come in and turn in expense tickets and expect to get paid. It's just that simple. You're going to learn the protocol and the procedure. This has never been the protocol and procedure in the seven years that I have traveled to LMA for three meetings out of the year. I have never had to call you per se and talk to you directly pertaining to any of those meetings. That has never been a practice. And if that is something new, I should have received some type of email or something in writing stating that I'm not just the only one that has to do this procedure. And not saying that where it's in the handbook, well, the handbook that's for regular employees, that's not for the elected officials. And if we're gonna put something in place, 
we need to put it in place for everybody, not just me. It's in place for everybody and Alderman Gardner in the future. If you have some travel you want to do, I suggest you call me and get approval. Okay, that's all of that. And that's that's the law. That's the way it's going to be. That's and not how it's been going. Well, and it's unjust and it's fair that you owe me $352 for a, uh, for an element convention that I always did travel you, to. Did you call and get? No, and, I did not because I, I have never had to do that. Right. And I'm waiting on a phone call. I have never had to do that. I have Alderman never Gardner, had to call you. You're getting out of line. No, I'm just being honest okay. and telling I'm the being truth. Honest you too. know, have I ever had to call you? Yes, you have. No, I have not. Okay. I have never spoke to right. you we're pertaining gonna, to any we're gonna matter, move, we're, pertaining to getting approval from you for any meeting that I have traveled out of town. We're going to move on. Your personal vendettas we're, against me. I have no personal. Your personal vendettas against me need to go out the door because I have a job to do for my constituents and the people your, that I serve. Your constituents. And your personal opinion or feeling towards me and how you feel. When it comes pertaining to doing the uh, business for the city, that should be the most important thing, and, and not how you personally feel. Yeah. I have never a, a practice has never been practiced in the past for me to call you and get per, uh, permission. Normal practice is let your secretary know, let Jay or Pi know, and that goes from there. I have never had to do that. Well, but like I stated and said, if there's a new practice in place, I don't mind doing it. But give me some kind of email or something some formality of what needs to transpire and be done. I'm not saying I'm not willing to do it, but is every, every other alderman doing this practice or is it just for me? Alderman Garner, I would just say it's in our policies and procedures and alderman, you ought to know what those are. And that's all I'm going to say. Let's move on. And yes, from now on, if you want to get reimbursed for that, you come talk to me and tell me what you're going to do and that you did Well, going it. forward, you're saying that's, that's how it's supposed to be handled, but you have never Told me that. Yeah, I have, but you no, know, sir, you have not. You know. We have not even talked in three and a half years. So when have you told me that? <laughs> and whose fault is that? Well, we have not talked, so it goes both ways. Okay, no, it's going your way. It just anyway. Alderman Garner, our town is better than this than what you're putting no, out there. I'm being honest, telling the truth. You owe me three hundred and fifty two dollars, you should pay me With, my money then that you, I went to that meeting. Then you should call and, and get you should call and get approved. I've never had to do that. I'm Why did you just start this I, now? I'm moving on. I'm, te you I'm telling you. But we have never had that practice I'm, in place. I'm telling, I would not come to this meeting and Alderman lie Garner, on you. Alderman I Garner. have no need to lie on you, Mayor Crab. Yeah, well. No, just read your Facebook post. There's lies. Well, okay. okay, let's move on. Everything you say ain't the truth. Alderman Garner, we're going to move on. So we can Pre go there we're gonna if we really go, want to. We are on, going to item two on presentation of financial audit for the town of a day for fiscal year 2021-22. We have Mr. Scott Adams. Scott. And the, and the work that, that our CPA, uh, Ms. Moat, makes and does year-round is fixing to be reflected in, in uh, this, these financial controls, which our CPA did not find anything to do. And we're going to make sure we follow those procedures and controls to keep things the way they're supposed to do. Go ahead. All right. Uh, <laughs> bear with me. I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit, but uh, so I'll try to keep this brief. But uh, yes, I'm Scott Adams with Silas Simmons. Uh, just be, on behalf of our firm, we appreciate uh, the opportunity to provide our services to the town. Um, like I said, uh, with, with my voice going like this, I'm gonna try to keep it brief, but uh, certainly, um, you know, I believe I brought the audit reports previously to another meeting. Uh, so hopefully I'll had time to, to look at them and uh, if we need to have any further discussion than what I have to deliver, we can, we can certainly entertain any discussion. But um, uh, we performed a financial statement audit for July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Um, we're required to communicate that our responsibility is to come in and audit these financial statements. The financial statements are ultimately the responsibility of the board uh, and, and the management you have in place here. Uh, we did conduct our audit and I'm happy to report that we've issued uh, an unmodified opinion, which is a clean opinion. It means that we do believe the financial statements are uh, prepared, uh, you know, without any material misstatements or uh, any adjustments that need to be made to those financial statements as they are presented. So uh, obviously that, that's, that's the good opinion. So um, as part of our procedures, we also look at the internal controls that are related to the financial statement process. We don't necessarily look at every single internal control or every policy in place, but certainly anything that could affect uh, the financial statements being free of, uh, of misstatements um, and I'm happy to report we did not uh, identify any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses that 
uh, are required to be reported as a finding or communicated uh, to the board. So uh, obviously a, another good thing. Um, another thing that we're required to do is, you know, we can't look at every state law or regulation, but again, we, we look at those that uh, would impact the financial statements um, or, or could lead to a misstatement in the financial statements. Uh, and I'm happy to report in that area as well. Uh, we had no findings to report uh, as part of our procedures. Um, just a, a, a quick rundown. I won't go through all the, the financial information. I know you are well into 23 at this point. Um, but you know, total assets at the end of the year were 97 million, up about 13 million from the prior year. Uh, liabilities stood at about 21.4 million, which was down 1.6 million. Uh, the total net position stood right at about 75 million, which was up almost 13 million um, from the prior year. So uh, certainly, I would say that's uh, that's 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 a good thing. Um, and then the final thing, uh, a few years ago, the in addition to the, the state laws and regulations we look at related to the financial statements, uh, the state legislator, uh, legislative auditor came in and said, in addition to that, we want you to, to do these additional procedures. Uh, it's roughly about 20 pages uh, of additional procedures that we have to do. Um, I have one exception to report from those procedures. Uh, in reviewing the, sec uh, the sexual harassment portion of the, the handbook, um, in 2021 they, they changed uh, revenue statute to include certain language about annual training in the, in the handbook. Uh, that was not present at the time. Uh, I believe, uh, did y'all did, have y'all passed the, I know I saw it several months ago, y'all had been discussing uh, that, but I, I checked with Deborah and, and made sure that you know that was included in there so you know this next go around I, I anticipate that'll be cleared up um, but other than that uh, again out of those 20 pages of procedures uh, no other exceptions to report so okay. any questions from the council well Scott thank you so much and y'all y'all do thorough work those guys show up several of them they they occupy the boardroom in there for several weeks oh, and they, yeah, we camp out <laughs> yeah they they come in and they do a very thorough job and I, i'm very proud of, of you know the the, the grade and the, and the report that we've got and it's just a testament to the in, uh, clerks and the and deborah and her staff and all the people involved with with keeping up with everything so and i apologize i usually like to comment on that um you know uh, obviously deborah is a huge help she's our, our our general point of contact as we get started uh, of course, we have to go to different departments and, and work with other employees. Um, you know, everyone's extremely helpful. Uh, you know, if we need something, we understand they need to get their job done, but uh, they're timely in getting us what we request and what we ask for. So, uh, y'all, y'all, got some good, good people in place. Okay. I don't think we have to have entertain any kind of motion to accept the report. Do we? is that anything that I don't think we do? I, no. Well, Scott, look, thank you so much. Again, if there's no questions from council, you, you're free to go unless you want to stick around and listen. I uh, think I'm going to go get some rest, okay. but uh, <laughs> y'all have a good evening. And, All right. Uh, if, if anybody has any questions, if you get and deep into this thing. Anybody that, uh, if you're listening on Facebook or any, if anybody wants this report, it's free of charge. Just let get in touch with us. It'll be on our website. It's also filed with the legislative auditor. And it'll be there for your review if you anybody wants to go and read it uh, online or it, it'll be there so and if you want to come by here we'll be glad to let you look through it or get you a copy if you want that so thank you appreciate it very much all right thank, thank you all. Yeah. all right next thing we got I'm gonna do a quick update on some of our town projects that we've got there's several things here and we got Wynn Nettles here with us with uh, Brian Hammond and associate uh, he might talk on some of these things we had meetings the other day just getting updates uh, one of the things that uh, they're they're working on finishing of course on all the drainage product I mean uh, uh, projects you know there's several areas that hadn't been resurfaced and they're waiting to get everything completed and come in when we get some good weather and they're gonna do all the resurfacing of all those areas at one time so if you're looking for you know going over those rough spots till we get that done that's what we're waiting on for the 
complete project to be all the digging and all of the culverts put in place, good weather, and then they're going to come and re overlay all of those areas at one time. Uh, is there any questions on the, uh, the drainage issue? Uh, they're opening up the bid, uh, the street project, all the new streets, all of Alabama up to Oak Street from Riverside to Oak Street, uh, Elm Street, the older part of Elm Street. We also have Peach Street and Myrtle Street uh, going to be overlaid. And I think there's one or two other little sections that's going to be done. And they're going to open bids actually Thursday, I believe, for that on that project. So that will be getting started soon as we get some good weather and come in. Uh, the, uh, we're, then one of the next things that Camo Construction is going to do is clean out our culverts under Logan Sewell. That's the main thing that drains our whole town. All that water's got to go through there. And those, those uh, culverts are probably, I would say, anywhere from 30 to 45 percent stopped up uh, with, with mud and debris. And they're going to clean those out. Uh, we're going to make sure that we can. Uh, I know uh, Alderman Smith had, had told me about some beaver downs behind uh, at the Alabama Street ditch back in that area. They've got three, uh, there's three beaver dams. I walked it out and I saw three that we're going to try to get uh, the beavers trapped first and hopefully we can get those broken up. Uh, we're moving ahead on our, we're completing our substation, uh, the last leg of it. Uh, there, it's in design now with Brooks Harbor. Uh, and then that will be, once that's completed, we'll move on with that. That's going to be probably anywhere from 12 months to 14 months out of having that other relay station hooked up. Uh, we're moving on with, uh, we've, we had a meeting, we're, we're discussing maybe taking the ARPA funds and raising our water wells. Uh, uh, Cornell, you want to tell them what, what, what the department uh, uh, told us that we needed to do uh, as far as our water wells, what's required of us? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> the water wells, we got to have been raised because uh, we had our sanitary survey last year. They uh, cited us for as a deficiency. Uh, it's not at a significant, but it can be. But uh, as long as we are uh, moving ahead, what we're trying to do to get this uh, alleviated, uh, we'll be okay. But that we got to uh, raise all three wells. We got the redo all the power supply, the auxiliary power supply to the well, just in case we do have a flood where like we had in 2011. Because, I mean, in 2011 when we had that uh, deal, we just, y'all just did not know how close we were to be shut down without the water. <laughs> <laughs> so this is very important. You know, so, but anyway, but that'll be a great thing if we get that done. Okay, thank you, Cornell. And uh, we, uh, the next thing is the uh, DOTD, uh, the SLU funding. We met on that, and Jay talked a little bit with DOTD and a little bit today. Jay, you want to tell them where, where status that is? Mayor, we uh, spoke with uh, Shannon Dupont, who's the liaison for us on this project with DOTD, and she was very helpful in getting us the funds. And the contract for payments, this is a, this is a project that will be 90% funded by DOTD on construction. Uh, so the paperwork contract for payment or in their legal services section and in their contract services for review. They'll be forwarding that to the town so the mayor can sign off on it. In the meantime, uh, uh, Hammett Engineering, and I think they're working in the key and they're right now on the conceptual the engineering part of it. That's ongoing. That doesn't affect We don't have to wait on this paperwork here. So it's, uh, it's making progress. And we have to submit one more time for final plan and inspect for you. They've already seen it. So this should go quicker once we get down on the next two periods. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, the other thing I have is uh, Loran Scott is here with us. Loran, uh, uh, I'm happy to say she has really spearheaded this up. And it's called the Town of Today's Summer Feeding Program. So, Loran, you want to come tell them a little bit about it, what it's going to be? It's, a, um, it's the Healthy School Food Collaborative. And what it is, is the funding um, comes from the federal government, but they partner with local nonprofits. And so the town of Vidalia has, uh, is working with the Healthy School Food Collaborative to deliver meals to children during the months of June and July. It's free of charge. They deliver the meals uh, once a week, enough meals for two meals per day. 
and um, we are just acting as the liaison between the vendors and the nonprofit who actually deliver the meals to the children. Um, they also have a program for seniors. We are working on that at, at the moment to uh, get meals delivered to seniors as well in the community. There is no um, background check or income um, requirement for it. Um, we have the flyers that have been done. Hannah is going to post these for us. And all they do is scan the code or click on the link, fill out the short form with uh, their names and address, um, the names of the children in the household. It's, it's a place for at least 10 children on the form. And the meals will be housed at the convention center, but no distribution will be done there. The nonprofit will pick the meals up from the convention center and take them out to the homes once the vendor delivers them. So that's one of the uh, projects that we have. And like I said, we're in the process of trying to get a similar program through this similar funding for seniors in the community as well. Um, and the other projects that we spoke about, uh, we're still um, waiting on the Vidalia Safe Accessible Streets Project. It is in the reviewing stage. Um, and also, we are working on the DA Big Lane Project with um, Hammond and Associates, so we hope to be submitting it soon as well. And the final thing that we have is there is new funding available that was sent to me by Jessica Stroop with um, LSU Ag. It's the um, Safe Streets for All initiative, and um, it's a means of acquiring funding to fill in the gaps, but you have to have a safe, uh, safety plan for the city where we go out and we look at all the areas that needs improvement and you uh, present a holistic approach and then you can pinpoint funding to take care of each area and you don't have to wait as long to get the monies in if you already have the, the plan in place because everything will fall under that umbrella. So we have quite a few things in the works and we just ask that you all pray and keep us uh, uplifted that we can get this money done and, and make Vidalia a safe place for all when it comes to accessibility and travel. Okay. Thank you, Lorraine. I appreciate the I work you've done. Um, my question is pertaining to the feed, food, uh, summer food program. Mm -hmm. Will it affect those that already, I know it's normally a summer feeding program mm -hmm. already, so these kids can still eat twice they can eat from the original program and also eat from this one? Yes, they can They can still and get the the, um, the school lunch program. Correct. It is separate from this. This is strictly a nonprofit organization um, that I learned about mm -hmm. when we were at the NLC conference. And this one was, is actually based out of New Orleans. Okay. And there are no requirements. Only thing is the parent has to sign up put the children's names so it can be documented and that documentation turned <coughs> into the federal government to show that these are the children that were serviced. Okay, my second question is, can we reach out maybe to the school principals or something to get this out to the kids to kind of go to them and make sure we, you know, get we, this? We are, they're gonna be placed in the libraries. Um, I put the flyers for you guys, um, the mayor and the city manager. Uh, gave approval wanting you all to see it today and then we'll start distributing the flyers and place it out for public uh, viewing. Thank you. You're welcome. They, these look like they're pretty decent meals. On breakfast they got pancakes, fruit, muffins, and French toast for them for lunch. They have hamburgers on uh, wheat buns, grilled cheese, bar barbecue riblet, and chicken nuggets and other lunch options are corn dog, turkey sausage, mixed veggies, and fruit. So again, uh, to anybody listening to that, you've got to sign your children up. And, and, and it's for children 18 and younger. And they will be delivered to your home. Again, like Lorraine stressed, they don't come to the convention center looking for it. She can't do that. Yeah. There will be people that will be delivering the meals. So thank you again, Lorraine, for that. That's, that's really good. Ma yes. Yeah, I'm, yeah. That, let, let's let the people be aware of it now. Bobby, go ahead and tell them what we're doing with that. On the May 22nd, the <coughs> ULM University of Louisiana Monroe will be doing a flyover of the uh, city. 
for all the, the basically the photograph all the streets, utilities, such as that. So the day of May 22nd, you may see a drone flying over, but it's going to go everywhere and see. Don't shoot. Don't shoot them down. <laughs> <laughs> don't shoot it. Don't someday <laughs> But thank you. And one of the things you might say, well, how's that going to benefit the town? If you have a disaster and they and FEMA, when they go and do these things, they are going. They require us to show video evidence of where the damage was, and they want video evidence of what it looked like before and what it looked like after. And what we're doing, we're going to have that, and it'll be archived where we can keep it, and it would go with any kind of application in the future if we have a, a disaster or, or, or a claim. Uh, we have all of our documentation to show what was done and get easier to get reimbursed because that has been an issue. So thank you, Bobby. I appreciate that. And I think that's uh, all I'm going to cover right now on our, our project update unless somebody has a question about something. So we're going to move on and we're going to our board discussion and vote on approval of occupational license. Uh, the first one we got is rolling in the dough, Miss Hannah Grace Hinkle. And I think everybody is familiar with their business. And y'all want to tell us a little bit about it? Mm -hmm. And I think she's got samples. <laughs> Hello. Um, <laughs> so I'm Han Hinkle. Um, so Rolling in the Dough is a, um, a no-bake cookie dough um, business that I started when I was 17 at the farmer's market over in Natchez. Uh, but we're now on the Vidalia side, so we're opening our shop back up again. And we're going to have our cookie dough, full-blown coffee menu, pastries. Um, it's going to be a walk-in business as well as a drive through So... A lot of cool things upcoming. <laughs> well, great. Well, look, we appreciate y'all coming to today, and we feel like you're making a good move. Mm -hmm. uh, we, <laughs> us too, us too. <laughs> I think it's going to be good, and anything we can do to help y'all, we really appreciate it. So, Thank is there you. any questions of Ms. Hinkle? We hear a motion to approve. Make a motion. motion made by Alderman Best. Here's a second. Yes, second by Alderman Smith. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, y'all be coming later with a sign. Uh, we have it. We are. It'll be all day. Is, is that is that on there? No. Next month. Oh, it's turned in today. Yeah. It's okay. So we don't have it in our packet. No. Oh, uh, I guess we, uh, you know. Do y'all have a, a picture of it or, or anything with you now? Huh? Can you make copies just one so we won't have to come back? They can. Oh, you did. You got copies for everybody. Okay. All right. Do we have them yet? No, she said. That. Okay, if you would get them for us, just so we, you know, uh, while we're here on that, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, the Old South Trading Post LLC. Uh, they're going to be moving into Virg uh, portion of Virgil's building. If y'all know, going up Canal Street, the gift shop on the left there with all the balloons and flyers and things. That's uh, they they're going to be there. They're, the river, uh, my American Cruise Lines coming there. They feel like I said. Uh, definite spot they want to be not only for that but for travelers just coming in on that side of the river a place to drop in and get some you know Louisiana trinkets you know to take back home with them so I've met with them they're very sweet people I think they're going to do well and I'd like to motion for us to accept uh, that we would approve them for occupational license I'll make a motion. motion made by Alderman Smith or here's second second by Alderman Probst all in favor say aye aye uh -huh. all right Sure. Can she, can she sell on the riverfront if the ship is coming? Can she have a stain or? She'll have to, John will have to address that, and also we'd have to discuss, I mean, as far as with the riverfront authority, you know, what what can be done on there legally as far as, uh, you know, license to, to sell, you know, uh, you know, because anybody could come in and set up a shop. When, yeah, and, and, and we, and, I, and, and my, my initial response, unless it's a storefront, I just hate for us to start having peddlers there bugging the visitors getting off the boat you know trying to get them to sell them something I I don't want us to you know just my initial gut reaction would be I don't want to I don't want us to harass our visitors uh, but I, I would say this any of our businesses in Medea that want to uh, get with the cruise lines that's coming in to, to give them brochures on their businesses, what they have, where they can go. You'd be surprised at the people that might want to drop by there and just, you know, if they know where it's at and, and do and get things. So, uh, so anyway, well, Pi should be back with that and we'll take a look at that and get so y'all, because y'all are ready to get, y'all are ready to get started, aren't you? Yesterday? <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> oh, and by the way, that's where they're, uh, they're in the uh, where the uh, Steve and them just built the building. They're in the left hand side of the. Uh... Yeah. Okay. And y'all will have a drive through. Okay. All right. Where is it, Mayor? It's it, by weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I was going to answer the question. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. We can add. That's 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 getting yeah, yeah. Of course, it would require a unanimous vote, but let's let's get to it. For us to take it up, let's go ahead and have a vote to add an agenda item of approval to sign permit for rolling in the dough. I'll make Can hear a motion uh, approve it. A motion made by Alderman Betts. Second. second. Second by Alderwoman Demby. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. So it is added to the agenda. Any questions? That's good. She's got her layout. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Okay. Anybody got a question? Do I hear a motion we approve? I'm making a motion. Motion made by Alderman Betts. I hear a second. Say. Second by Alderman Smith. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. There we go. Good luck. Thank you all again for choosing today. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, next thing we have is this, this is a really good story. We have Mr. Bo Pilgrim and Mr. Charlie Hug with us from uh, Reed Insurance. Uh, they are handling our workman's comp and they have a little presentation for us tonight. Did you and bring it? Uh, Bo, go ahead and tell us what you got for us. Well, I got a check. I got a, I got a big check. <laughs> but first I was gonna say is just, uh, we've been doing the insurance for the town for uh, several years since uh, Buzz has been mayor and uh, really enjoyed working with the town. There's several different things the town has done that all, the common person doesn't know because everybody's not quite as excited about the insurance as like me and Brent are. And, uh, but you know, this is one of the things that we've done is what we're gonna talk about here in a second. But another is the protection class rating that we have too. Every now and then I, I see it again and I stop for a minute and just think, I can't believe a town our size has that sort of protection class rating. But what it means is you pay way less than a typical town does for your insurance because of that rating. You know, Brent can attest to that. But uh, a couple other things that, uh, that this administration has done is they brought the insurance back to Vidalia so that we have that income that's being spent here in Vidalia. We're also working with the workers' compensation insurance company that is domicile in Louisiana. So it's keeping those dollars here. And also we are partnering through the town with the specific company, Louisiana Workers' Compensation Corporation, that then has a dividend program because the town has done such a great job at keeping their claims low, keeping it a safe workplace. You know, I'm happy to present that we've got a check for $222,000 mm -hmm. that we're giving to the town of Adelia. Thank you. Yeah. Let's, let's get a, let's get a, let's get a picture. Let's, I'd like to ask the alderman to come down front with Bo and Charlie. If we like, can we get a picture? Oh, yes. You gonna make it? Yeah. more so we can give that back to us. Now I can one more. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Next thing we have is a uh, board discussion and vote on the day. Police Department personnel, Mark Davis going to a full-time narcotics officer. Any questions? Joey's here with us. Okay, here a motion to approve. 
I'll make a motion. Motion made by Alderman Betts. So here's second. Second. Second by Alderman Denby. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, next thing we do have is a public hearing on an ordinance to amend the Vidalia, Louisiana Zoning and Development Code and repeal the exist currently existing. Mayor, it's a correction on that. It's not. We're not repealing anything. So uh, what, it's just, I, we're just amending. Okay, amending. Okay, strike, uh, repealing, and just amending. Okay. So we're having a public hearing on an ordinance to amend the Vidalia, Louisiana Zoning and Development Code. Uh, from the exi existing current zoning code. So we're going to hear a motion to go into public hearing. I make the motion. Motion made by Alderman Gardner. Here a second. Second, second by Alderman Probes. All in favor say aye. 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 We're in public hearing. So uh, before we do that, let me set the table with that uh, before any discussion. Ms. Cassandra Lynch here, she's a president of our planning commission. Cassandra, you want to tell us a little bit about y'all's process and, and what y'all did looking at this? <laughs> I'm Cassandra and I'm the chairperson for zoning and planning and what a fun job it is mm. and the things that we were looking at was we discovered we had some oops well some old oops that we wanted to bring to y'all attention the one was the rezoning of the track that said commercial mix there was only one section out of all of this area out here that was commercial mix and it really needed to be commercial, community commercial. There was just one little spot. Everything else around it, Walmart and Sprint, all of that is community commercial. So we needed to fix that. So we were asking that we bring it to y'all attention and then y'all take it from there. The second thing that we saw was it said that fuel pumps and canopies had to be in the front of the store, in front of the property. Well, when you drive from the foot of the bridge all the way through Vidalia, they're already in the front of the uh, can all the canopies are in the front and all the fuel pumps are in the front. So we ask that we correct that too. And it said that the maximum size of a pole sign could only be 32 square feet. Well, that's kind of small. <laughs> and as you grow older, it gets smaller. <laughs> So we said that the, and it said that the maximum should be at least 200 square feet. And the last thing we looked at was, it said that the lights should be only amber and white. Well, if you drive from the foot of the bridge, all the way through Virginia, they're all red and green. We don't have not one white or amber light at any of the signs in the day. So we just want to make sure that we make the right changes and be in compliance with what we say we're supposed to be doing. And we just wanted to bring it to your attention so that y'all can discuss it. And everyone on the planning and zoning committee was 100% in agreement that we make these changes. So, thank you very much for your time and have a blessed evening. Thank you very much because I think that's well put. I think now we also have here we have Mr. Uh, John Thompson who is the engineer for racetrack and Scott Griffin with uh, who is the racetrack project manager and I'd like to invite them to come up and hello. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is John Thompson. I'm with Duplantis Design Group. I am the design engineer here to discuss with you today our proposed raceway gas station development. 
Um, on my left here is Mr. Scott Griffin. He is with Racetrack, and he is here holding my sign. Thank you very much for holding that. Um, <laughs> do apologize for that, but anyway, so yes, to recap, um, we are here for an official recommendation to change that zoning, and exactly for the reasons that she said, and this is really specific for what we're trying to go here. So the current property, as she mentioned, is currently CMU, which is mixed commercial. To her point, this was the only piece of property that was that zoning, everything else surrounding it was community commercial, such as Walmart and the Sprint Mart and everything there. We are simply trying to see if we can change that zoning to be consistent with the remainder of the zoning in your town. And we would certainly be, try to beat the character area, which is on the corridor of the highway. And a little bit about the project. Um, right now we have this conceptual site plan shown. The location is it's an, uh, currently an agriculture lot right across highway from Walmart. Uh, we are intending to basically extend a driveway connection immediately across from the Walmart drive and add a fourth leg to that signal and therefore you would have signalized intersection at the highway similar to the Walmart. We're also proposing another driveway further to the east and we are in negotiations with DOTD right now about that driveway. Um, but as you can see, this is the proposed layout for the store. What it consists of is a convenience store that is for raceway. It is 3,500 square foot in size. You've got the fueling pumps currently shown in the front. Um, that was one of the issues of the ordinance. It had restricted you to be, I think, within 20 feet of the side. That does not allow for sufficient drive aisle space for you to circulate the canopy. So we do appreciate that if you would recommend relief of that particular ordinance. Um, elsewhere, about the signage, like you said, trying to be consistent with your character area or the precedent that people have. You've got Walmart, Sprint Mart, Shell, decent sized fuel price signs. All we're trying to ask is to be consistent with what's been established. And again, due to the coloring, as you mentioned, that it is not, not sure if anyone actually complied with that ordinance, but your typical fuel signage red for gasoline, green for diesel. That is a national standards, that is for every state. And you know, we certainly just trying to be consistent again with everything. Um, one of the issues mentioned in the sign, and, and forgive me if we need to bring it up in the next agenda item, I'm not sure. If I'm jumping ahead, let me know. But we did not officially ask about the sign height. And so one of the ordinance requirements for the CMU zoning was restricted to 32 square foot. As you mentioned, that's not big. That's eight by four, roughly. Um, we are asking for approximately 200 square feet, which again, much more consistent with an MI and that shell sign over there. We'll probably be even smaller than that one. I don't know the dimensions, but. Um, in addition to the height increase, I mean, I'm sorry, the size increase, one of the things we forgot to ask about was the height. The current zoning restricts your pole signage to only 20 feet high. Um, we are asking to get up to 35 feet because to be honest with you, if you get a signed cabinet that's 200 square feet, it's only gonna be about yay high off the ground and it will be harder to see. So that allowable increase in signage height would certainly be appreciated because it would just be more visible to motorists from the highway. And again, that is pretty consistent with what you basically have out there on the corridor right now. Um, but anyway, back to this. So this is the current racetrack, I mean, I'm sorry, raceway gas station for racetrack, sorry that will be on this property at the location shown. Uh, this is our concept plan. I've got a couple of renderings I presented to your planning commission. Um, Scott, if you don't mind, I think the last few pages. But this is an architectural rendering of the proposed building as well as the fuel canopies. There, and so this would be your typical gas station fuel canopy. You've got the raceway logo. It's blue and red with the white lettering. Um, you guys may be familiar with Raceway and or Racetrack, but this is pretty consistent with what they have across their fleet. In the rear, on the side of the site, this is specifically a green diesel canopy. Again, this is a site that will have both regular fueling as well as diesel for your heavier trucks. That canopy signage is green for that reason. Similar to the price signage, the green is indicative of diesel. And that's simply you know, what the architectural element on that is trying to convey. And then the last sheet, this is the prototype architectural rendering of your convenience store. Um, you know, pretty modern, nice looking building if you ask me, but you know, you've got siding, gray coloring, that darker, 
and then you got the Raceway logo with the big arch coming across the metal, and then you've got the you know on the go little signage like that, and then you know on the storefront they'll have you know food and that kind of offering similar to your typical racetracks and raceways. Um, I will say that y'all's newer stations, and, I, and I've been at them, they're really nice. I mean, I think it's really a nice addition. Uh, the way, will it have like a food court in the middle of it, like the, the like some of the ones that I've seen? Uh, yes, sir. That, that's correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. A raceway is simply just a smaller, more compact version, but they do have similar offerings for your food. Um, I can add a little bit to that. Yeah. So, raceway is um, a little bit different than the racetrack. Racetrack is kind of standardized model all the way through our racetrack stores. Raceway is a franchisee, um, so be a member of the community that owns that franchise um, and employs anywhere between 15 and 20, um, hopefully local folks. Uh, it is up to them what they offer inside of it. Still standard convenience store, um, but when you go to a different raceway in a different location, you may see different offerings, um, whereas racetrack, you'll see the same offerings everywhere. Okay. Just to have more flexibility with local food, right? Meaning, obviously, if there's local market, <coughs> different brands, you know, they'll be selling that kind of material in the store. Uh, but thank you, Scott, for clarifying that for me. Okay. But do appreciate your support and uh, glad that you like all the gas stations. So. <laughs> I've been doing racetracks for my whole life since I've been working, so this has been many years doing these, but do appreciate that. Thank you. They, they all look busy to me, so I thought I'm, you know. They yeah. draw them in, that's for sure. Uh, well, thank you all very much for bringing that here. We're still in public uh, session. Does anybody in, in public have any comments before we exit public the public hearing? Anybody? Okay. I'm going to ask that we can exit public hearing. I so move. Moved by Ms. Denby, Alderman Woman Denby. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Garner. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to go on to... Uh, uh, all in favor say aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> number eight, board discussion vote on an ordinance to amend the Vidalia, Louisiana Zoning and Development Code. Let's go ahead and take a motion, get a second, then we'll discuss it. I'll make a vote. motion. Motion made by Alderman Betts. Are you a second? Okay. I have a question. So are we only amending just that one particular thing or everything that she listed? Does she everything that I mentioned. Okay. Uh, but anyway, motion made by Alderman Betts. Are you a second? second. Uh huh. Okay. I think this time, you have the public hearing and the board can change things as you present. They listen to what everybody said. So, I would say that you wanted to also raise the yeah. maximum height. Both sides. Yeah. Yeah, we, I thought that's what we was fixing to do, but anyway. Yeah, at some point, somebody would take a motion to say, well, I moved to add so and so. Okay, that's fine. Vote on that to add it. Okay. But chair, whatever uh, pleases the council, I mean, we can, uh, if you want to discuss it before we make the motion, we can do that if you want to. Yeah. So I guess, is there anybody not in favor of things as, as uh, the, the chairwoman mentioned from the Planning and Zoning Commission, which they said that they all were 100% for that. Did you, did you not mention the height? I mean, did y'all not address the height? They mentioned that. That's correct. And that was not officially a part of planning and zoning recommendation because I did not mention it in that okay. request. Subsequent okay. to that meeting, it was brought to my attention, and that's why I brought it up. Okay. Um, I don't know if I did the right procedure. That's why I apologize okay. if I jumped ahead. So I feel like we could, at this point, make uh, have enter, uh, add to that of the recommendation of the uh, planning commission to raise the height um, for this for this one uh, for this instance for this particular sign, or, or do, can we do it for just this one sign? Okay. All right. Yeah. 
Yeah, the rest of them all through town is probably that tall or taller. So, uh, any discussion on that? Does anybody want to add that to the uh, to the ordinance? Sure, man. I know what I'm doing. He okay. made the motion, so you yeah. still had a motion on the floor. So well, we, okay, but we haven't got a second yet. Then we can. Then we can. I'll then we can amend it. Okay. Second made by Alderman Smith. Now, motion on the floor. We've had discussion. Do we want to amend the motion yeah. to add I'll, the height? I'll amend my motion to include, include. the. Okay. Height. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Smith. All right. Any discussion? All right. Let's go to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Here we go. We're ready to go. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Now we're going to have board discussion and vote on approval of bids for American Cruise Line bus turnaround. Uh, we have, you know, American Cruise Lines, uh, they have several buses coming in now to offload their... their uh, Mayor, Mayor, you, you skipped you skip line. Pardon? You skipped line. Ordinance. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, this is it. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right, introduction of an ordinance adopting the operating budget of revenues and expenses for the town of Adelia, Louisiana for the fiscal year 2023-24. This is not an action item, it's just the introduction of the budget ordinance that we will be uh, discussing and bringing up over the next several weeks. Uh, and just anybody wanting a copy of that, just get with our office. We'll be uh, working some more with our some of our aldermen to go over uh, the budgets for this year before we actually bring it to a meeting. Uh, so anyway, that's just an introduction of the ordinance. Mm. Now going to uh, item 10, board discussion, vote on approval of bids for American Cruise Line bus turnaround. Uh, so we're going to, uh, we've got, we have what, three bids or two? two look like two. 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 Y'all have them in today? Yeah, look okay. like two. All right, is there any questions on that? <coughs> yeah, okay. I got it. Anybody got any questions on? This is going to allow those those buses to get off the main road there and to offload and, and load passengers up. Uh, okay, and the winner of the uh, for bids on town surplus vehicles. As y'all know, we've uh, we've received a bunch of vehicles through the Enterprise uh, Rental Program, which y'all been seeing and it's been approved. And now we have the excess vehicles. Uh, we have list of them. Uh, I know that Joy's been in conversation with at least some of our local other uh, law enforcement agencies, number one being Faraday, the town of Faraday. Uh, I think Pastor Botley, uh, Mayor Botley and Waterproof has requested maybe looking at maybe a unit or two. But I wanted to, to find out if the uh, council wants to entertain doing an intergovernmental agreement with those com uh, communities to maybe give them a car or two. Uh, to help them with their police in their respective communities. I, I, we, I hope that we do entertain that. Uh, we've been blessed as a town to be able to do what we do and keep our people and our officers and all of our, our public safety uh, workers in, in very good equipment and safe. So, uh, Joey, would you like to, I mean, who else, has anybody else reached out to you besides Faraday and uh, uh, Police Clayton, Chief King? Clayton and Jonesville. Who's that? Clayton, Clayton and Jonesville. Okay. All right. Have they requested a, no, a number of vehicles or? Uh, they just, whatever they can get, they'll be ready for Okay. All right. And how was, uh, now, what I would recommend that we do is put these out for bid and, and, and y'all go ahead and be thinking about what y'all want to do as far as maybe donating, not donating, but going into an intergovernmental agreement with these communities to get them some extra help on patrolling their streets. Um, and a number of units y'all want to pick out for that? Do y'all want to? And then the rest of them we can put out for bid, with uh, subject to uh, we can deny any bids. You know, but we want to make sure that we can uh, accept or reject any and all bids if they don't come in as something we feel like fair. Mayor. Uh huh. Yeah, I've said more than I've said in two years. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't agree with that. I was, I was thinking it. If the motion would be to allow, you know, the chief to enter into intergovernmental agreements with local, you know, similar agencies, and then after that's accomplished, then put the rest of them up to be. Mm -hmm. 
but we need to identify how many that is, or I mean. I mean, he can do as many in the building as he wants to. <clears throat> but I don't want, I don't, I don't every town in Louisiana and Mississippi calling us up wanting to go into an agreement to get her. What I'm going to say, I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just meaning that uh, I still think that I'd like to help our local communities out if we can. Uh, uh, I, I think it's a big need for I sure. I think this is a phraseology problem, though. So, I mean, any discussion from the council? What would y'all like to see? Uh, Our thoughts or ideas? I, I definitely I mean, they want, Joey. I'd like to help. Uh, How <coughs> I many are they talking about know. in each place? I know Clayton. I think they're going to one. Uh, I think Mayor's been in contact with work group more than I have. I'm not sure how many. Uh, Barry before they came to town, they came to the town and talked about the building there. And John will. Did they say, uh, did Verity say two or three? Uh, I talked with Sam, but he never gave me a number. Yeah, they, they never told me a number. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, like I said, they'll be grateful for one number. I, I agree with council on letting Joey, you know, figure it out and do you know, the government agreement the thing and yeah. then whatever is left over. I think they let them pick out the best one. How much the car work? It varies. It varies. That's what I was just saying. We only have, we actually only have a few that's going to be worth value uh, giving. Very few. Yeah. Jay, go ahead. What, what, uh, what we're looking at is we got, I know we got police department vehicles that you're thinking about, but we also have a number of street sanitation utility pickups that are probably not in the mix for the center government agency. So what we were planning to do is hopefully get the board to approve us to, to advertise for bids on surplus vehicles that we know we're going to sell. In the meantime, we'll get the enterprise. We've got we've got information. They can get uh, secondary market values in place for each vehicle we're going to put up for bids. So when we advertise for bids at the next meeting, at least on the street sanitation utility pickups, we'll have the bids ready to be open. We'll have the board with a list of the approximate estimated values the enterprise came up. So as these bids are open. Y'all have a good idea of, well, this, we got a bid in here, but this secondary market value is this. Y'all have a better opportunity to say, well, we'll accept that bid or we might reject it if it comes in very low. So we thought maybe with the street sanitation utility vehicles, they might be a separate batch from the police department until, until Joe Chief Merrill can sort out which vehicles we might want to donate our work with another community. That, does that make sense on what, you know, uh, that way y'all would have, y'all would have a good idea of what these vehicles work as opposed to when the uh, car person is up there. And we can, we can either reject or, or, you know, or accept or, or reject them. So. That's kind of why I was thinking about on these cars, see what kind of bids you get back and see which ones you make. Well, okay, well, let's. I think the first thing we need to do is just get a count of who, how many they want. You know, me and you will work on that and we'll try to get a, a good count. And how many we actually have that we feel comfortable maybe with them being safe, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's not going to be many. Uh, I, I can get you that information from the police department. Okay. Uh, but it's not going to be many. All right, any other questions? So, you know, want to make a motion to approve us to go that route? I think Jake pretty well outlined it pretty good. Uh, I make that motion. Motion made by Alderman Demi to hear second. Second. Second by Alderman Betts. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right, next thing we have is adjournment. To hear a motion to adjourn. I make that motion. Motion made by Alderman Demi. Here's second. Second. Second by Alderman Gardner. All in favor say aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. <laughs>